Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm excited today to be sharing about one of the things that stresses me out the most, which is sub plans. Um, and I want to share some of the things that I've been using recently, things that have worked in the past, um, sort of how I set that up and how I share this um, content with subs and with kids. Um, and I'm going to share some of those ideas and then also talk a little bit about some digital resources and how you might use those and integrate those in your sub plans um, if you have technology and things available. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So um, that's what's coming up. First of all, though, um, if you hear about any resource or idea or thing, you're like, that's cool. Where can I find that? Um, I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to the links that I talk about in these videos. You can either go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org and click on the video tab to find that or um, um, at the bottom of the caption for wherever you're, wherever you're watching or listening to this video, there should be a direct link to that. Um, and you can go and check that out um, for all those links. Um, and then one more thing, there's a, a Facebook group I started several years ago called Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. Um, if you want to join, come join, uh, learn from other people, ask questions, make friends. It's a great place to um, connect with other people and learn stuff together. Okay. So, but I know I said I was going to talk about sub resources, but I always love to talk a little bit about bulletin boards every once in a while because I have a passion for bulletin boards. Um, and I, I, that's the silliest thing I think I've ever said, but no, I, I really do <laughs> feel like bulletin boards are so valuable because they are, uh, if they're used correctly, they can be an advocacy tool for us, even when we are not around. So like when, you know, that basketball team is practicing or parents are in the school for, whatever night or volunteer night or whatever like you know then they come by the music room if you have something out in the hallway um that is advocacy for you even when you're not physically there it can be there to remind people about what you do and why it's important and um, it does so much so um one of the things that i'm getting excited about is one of my upcoming concerts is going to be ocean themed um so going up in the hallway is going to be an ocean themed rhythm music bulletin board and i am so very excited about it. I, I used this a couple years ago um, and it's all it's been printed out and stuff at school um, and it's ready to go. But I wanted to just share a couple of things that are in it um, so you can like see like what I'm putting out in the hallway. So the, the main uh, the main idea behind the bulletin board is that uh, I'm taking words, um, ocean themed words and putting them out in these posters with um, the rhythms that go with them. So like lobster is ta ta. And so uh, the lobster, the picture goes up there, the name goes up there, and then there's the rhythm too. Um, and then there are all different ocean themed words. Dolphin, okay, also ta, ta, okay, hold on. I got some other shit. I was, I was gonna laugh for the next one, it was ta, ta. No, it's crab, crab, okay, so ta, rest. Okay, let's see. Octopus, ta, di, ta, t, t, ta, whatever you say. Seal, ta, rest. Let's see. Uh, whale, ta, rest. So it goes, it's um, all uh, eighth notes and quarter notes. And um, the whole the whole point is basically like, I want students to see words that they recognize and I want them to see the rhythm connections. And I want um, I want them to, uh, again, because because the, the, the grade that's gonna be doing this concert is younger, it's um, second grade. So this is like perfect helping them find the connection between words and syllables and rhythms. And so this is a, a fun thing that's going to go up. Um, there are like 30 or 35 words or something, um, all different animals, creatures, things related to the ocean. So that's going to go up. And then next to it is going to be, there's this, um, see, I have already printed out at school, but I forgot to bring it home. So I printed it out again to show you. So um, there are these little seashells in multiple colors that spell out S O U N. DS sounds of the, and then on this little narwhal, it says C. So <laughs> I'm excited. It's going to say sounds of the C and then have all those little, those different separate pages with the, uh, the rhythms and the um, vocabulary words of things from the ocean. And then again, because of advocacy, 
because always, it's not just music in our schools month, M music advocacy should happen all year long, um, is this little poster that says, all words have rhythm. If you take the time to think about it, everything around us can be musical and full of life. Here are some words, rhythms, and sounds of the sea. Can you think of any other great ocean words to add? So that's gonna just go up in the hallway and it's gonna be out there for kids to like look at, talk about, you know, identify things as they walk by, but that's up there and it, it does two things. One, it's like, you know, it helps parents see sort of what we're doing and we're talking about rhythm and making connections between rhythm and words. Um, but also it's there um, advocating for what we do in the music room and it's there to remind people like, oh, there's an ocean concert coming up. Why would he choose this one? Oh, there's an ocean. So my, right next time I'm also going to put a poster that says like, don't forget on May or not May, on March, whatever, or April, whatever. I can't remember the day of the concert. On the, in the April, whatever at 6 p.m. Don't forget there's a concert. So, so it, it does a couple things. It, it reinforces rhythmic concepts. Um, it reminds kids of what we're doing in class. It reminds people of the concert. It's fun and bright and exciting um, and should be something fun that, that, um, that anybody can enjoy as they walk by. So that's going up. It, I put a link to that on the links page if you're interested. But Sounds of the Sea, Sounds of the sea I also have a version of this for barnyard and for space and for whatever so like depending on what theme I'm doing that year or maybe the school's theme or whatever I have a bulletin board ready to go that is related to the rhythm and related to uh, the content we're doing I also a couple times have had like um, ELL teachers like English language learners um, the, the teachers who specialize in teaching that um, I've had people come by and be like wait you have a you have an image of the thing and the word and the syllable and I'm like well, okay well not yeah so we're gonna go we're going for rhythm here we're talking about rhythm <laughs> and they're like yeah but you're identifying the sounds and the syllables and the words and you're putting the label for it and a picture and I'm like yeah and they're like well that's really good like that that's really helpful for English language learners and I'm like I know that's why I took the certification course no but like it, it really is helpful to have that vocabulary word and then an image that relates to that kids uh, who are learning English or even I mean just any kid um, it's really helpful for them to have that visual that goes along with um, the content so it's yay it does a lot of great things um, but it's also just a fun bulletin board and it fills up the space and it's bright and it's exciting so um, lots of great things um, in not just this one but there are other bulletin boards like it too that you could tr try out so that one is one I wanted to share because that's going up in like the next week um, and it's something fun and exciting okay so let's talk about um, sub resources uh, I've been teaching this is what you're 10, 11, something of a while. And um, I, every time, I, every time, every time I do a sub resource it, or, or sub plan, it feels like the first time. It, like, it, I always feel like I'm reinventing the wheel every single time, even though I know I'm not. Um, because I have some sub resources that I reuse every year, but there's like always some reason why something doesn't quite work. Oh, this class repeated, or there's something happened, or this one somehow saw this, or they didn't see. So I feel like I'm constantly changing, retooling, retrying things, and it's just this like constant source of frustration of like, oh, why am I doing this again? Um, and so I wanted to share some of the sub resources that have worked and have had like minimal setup time. <laughs> the last uh, couple months things that have worked well that have been fun that I've gotten good feedback from the sub slash also the students um, and so the first thing I'll share um, is I shared um, you know a couple weeks ago I talked about this these book companion resources that I've made and so basically what I I like to be able to do is to I like to give the sub um, options and so, for example, um, it's like I, with these book companion resources, what it is is like there's a book, right? It's like my name is Celia, uh, May Almost Celia, which is the life of Celia Cruz. Written, this is by Monica Brown, illustrated by Rafael Lopez, I think. Yeah. Um, super amazing book. Details the life of Celia Cruz, who's this amazing Latin artist um, and from Cuba originally. And just a, a really amazing person that maybe my students don't know about. So what I do is I leave the book with this with the sub and say like first please read this book. Um, and then options. Um, so options I, I leave on like a little there's a little thing that says like suggested grades and all this um, extra stuff. And so basically like they go through the story and then I also have along with it like a PowerPoint that gives details about um, the person's life 
um, maybe specific things about their career or accomplishments that they've had. Um, and then if there's vocabulary in here, like Latin music is a word that comes up, what does that mean? So there's like a whole slide that sort of explains that, has some examples. Um, there's a whole slide that's like, um, that d there are different musical genres and dance genres that are included in here. It's like the rumba, the cha-cha-cha, like what are those? So it gives a quick little explanation of that. Um, or, I mean, there, there are, there are a couple just slides of like explaining that vocabulary. So talking about the different things that kids might not recognize. Um, and, and so that's in the PowerPoint. And then in the PowerPoint also are links to videos online. So like um, I've found four or six different videos about Celia Cruz. And on that slide, I put like the video, a quick little descriptor, a link, and then also how long it is. Because um, I if the, sub, if the sub is, is as they're going through it, if they're trying to think like, okay, well, the book is going to take about so many minutes to read, or maybe they're in the middle of a lesson and they're trying to figure out, well, what do I do next? Okay, so the book has taken this long. Um, I know I have 10 more minutes in class. This video says it's eight minutes long. Okay, cool. But I, I vet all the videos, right? So like I know like you could watch any of these videos and it would be fine. So in, in this set about Celia Cruz, um, there's one that's like uh, a quick history of her life. There's a video of her performing. There are a couple videos of her performing. Um, there's a video of like, there was a, um, uh, there's like some dedications or some uh, tr tributes to her. Um, there's one of Sally Cruz on Sesame Street. So like, like cool videos that would go along with the set. Um, so that gives the sub options, but that's in a PowerPoint, right? So they get the book, they get a PowerPoint with all that information. And then depending on the grade level of who I've either suggested it for or whatever the sub is doing, um, I leave, there's like a worksheet. This is like a, like a comprehension worksheet. So like Celia Cruz is known for shouting out the Spanish word azúcar when she's singing. What does azúcar mean? And it explains that in the book, right? So um, Celia Cruz is known as the queen of what? A, jazz. B, salsa. C, rock and roll. D, blues. And so like this is like a comprehension thing, right? Um, I feel like subs like this sort of thing because this is something that they would see if they were subbing for like a second grade homeroom. So like, I feel like they would maybe be comfortable with this. And even if it's like not the most musical thing, it is music content and it is giving kids like a recap of the book. So I think it's valuable. And if the sub is comfortable and the kids are comfortable, like, great. I'm not expecting any like new learning to happen on a sub day. If the sub shows up, I'm thankful because that sometimes they don't. So anything, if I can give them something that like they're comfortable, they're used to seeing, great. What are some other things? Depending on the grade level, sometimes I just have a coloring page. Who is Celia Cruz? Color it in, you know, and add extra things. This one has Celia Cruz plus the Cuban flag plus a picture of Cuba because she's from Cuba. Um, this one is super fun. So it's about Celia Cruz and then it goes through like name a few things. Well, because the book talks about her influences, right? Name a few things from your life that would influence any music or art you might create. This could be something you like to do, food you like to eat, books, TV shows, etc. So that just goes through. Again, it's like another... This is more like creative thinking, creative writing, as opposed to just like comprehension of the book. So it's like a, a it is a worksheet, but it's like the next, like the next sort of step in that process. The again, if the sub wants to get in creative writing, there's another thing for just like recap the story, um, and that's just all like extra worksheets that they could use. And I print out so like I, this is sort of what I leave for this book. So like I leave the book. I leave all of these like master copy things. Um, I pre-print a bunch of stuff for subs. Um, and then it all goes in a folder in a filing cabinet. So like if I have an emergency sick day or something, or if I just want to, I'm setting out lesson plans and I don't want to have to work to like go down to the copier. I pre-print a lot of this stuff so I can just grab it and use it as needed. Um, so a lot of times like after a sub day, I'll assess what I've used and then go print more in my free time. Not even like, oh, I got a sub day tomorrow, but like, Maybe in four weeks, I'm going to need to use this again, or maybe in two months, but I want to print it now so I'm not, you know, struggling the day before. Anyway, so I print out a bunch of that stuff and I put it um, away. And subs have said, they're like, we like having options, you know, like, it's good to have the options in case, like, okay, well, this is cool, but we ended up not having enough time to do yada, yada, yada. I want them to have more options than not. I don't want them to feel like, ooh, I'm scrambling to fill in time. So... Leaving the book that is a great book, good content, amazing musician, that's wonderful. Um, leaving in coloring options if they want or comprehension options if they want or read through the PowerPoint or watch the videos, 
all of those things are fine and would be a great option. If they, do, if they don't ever do the coloring or they don't ever do the worksheets or whatever, if they just do the videos, that's fine. I want them to have choices. But the problem is I don't have enough choices because I, d I made all this stuff for three books and then I've been using those with my students. So I'm like, okay, but we're, now I'm out because I've used them. Um, and I, I personally, am, I, like I like to leave, um, like my thought is you can reuse things for multiple grades. But I, I sort of try and be strategic. So like my name is Celia, I leave that for third grade and only third grade. I don't reuse it in fourth grade. I don't reuse it in other grades because I want to be able to use it next year. So like if, I, if I've if i used it already and they like come back, they're like, oh, we did all this. I don't want the sub to be like, oh no, error, error, what do I do now? I, so I don't want them to like come in and be like, oh no. So I typically don't reset these for multiple grades. You can, you totally can, but um I just don't, just for my planning. So, but the problem was that like I made three of these. I did it for this book, um, The Name is Celia. I did it for Ella Queen of Jazz. And I did it for um, uh, The Music in George's Head, which is a book about George Gershwin and how he wrote Rhapsody in Blue. So Ella Fitzgerald, Celia Cruz, and George Gershwin. But then like I was out. So um, I'm on spring break and <laughs> I've been making more. So um, now I have three more sets to put in my sub tub. So I did all the same exact work. So PowerPoint and um, vocabulary and worksheets and all the extras and stuff for three new books. So then the new books I did are Bach to the Rescue, which is a cute little book about <laughs> J.S. Bach and how he wrote the Goldberg Variations. It is uh, it's less factual and more just like fun, but it is factual. It's just like a silly take on it. Um, so, but again, the kids love the illustrations that looks like a cartoon. It's funny. This, what's happening in the story is funny, but it does retell the story of Bach and the Goldberg variation. So again, super cool. And then like the worksheets and things can be follow up. It's like they give explanation about what could be actual Goldberg variation. The, the video links I have are like to, there's one about Bach's life. And then there's one of like Lang Lang playing, um, one of the songs from the variations. I mean, like it gives a couple cool little things in there, but this is like, Woohoo! Okay, another one. This will be great for younger grades. The coloring will be easy and perfect too. Another one I did was this one, Coat of Many Colors. This is literally the lyrics from Coat of Many Colors by Dolly Parton, the very famous song that she wrote, which she sometimes says is her favorite song. She's written thousands of songs, so I'm sure she has a lot of favorites, but this is a great one. Um, the illustrations in this one are so cool. I know I've shared about this book before, um, like using it with kids. Uh, but now I have this as a sub resource too. So now I can put it into my filing cabinet so that like when I need it, they can pull it out. And even if we've read it in class, well, then you have the video links, the, the vocabulary, you've got the worksheets, all that sort of stuff um, as an option for like next steps. So Box the Rescue, Dolly Parton's Coat of Many Colors. And the, the next one I did, which I have a couple more I'm working on right now, because I'm like, I... I like being able to just grab this and put it out and be like, bye, see ya, I'm gone for a day. So like having these options is, it makes it easier to plan for me. So I'm making more of these so I can just grab and go as I need it. Um, and then this one is called Before John Was a Jazz Giant, which is about John Coltrane. And I love this book because it talks about all of his influences and like the things that he heard um, growing up. So like Before John Was a Jazz Giant, he heard hand bones knocking in grandma's pots, daddy strumming the ukulele and mama cranking the phonograph. And it goes through, he hears, you know, people at church and marching bands and um, spirituals and people singing at funerals or parades or like all the things that he hears, super cool illustrations, but also just like a cool story about like what influenced him as he was growing up, what he heard. Doing the research for this set was super cool too, because like giving more information about Coltrane's life, um, some of the videos of, of him performing are super cool. So being able to put all that together is great. And now I have three more books to put in my sub file um, and I can go to school, print all that stuff out and just set it and know that like I can, when needed, just like grab it and go. One extra thing I even do is like, um, I even do like a read aloud myself in case the sub's like, I don't want to read it. 
Okay, fine. So that like so, I'll, I'll I have a um, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, but I have a flash drive dedicated to just my substitute resources. Like the sub might want to pick out and use, and so on that flash drive are a bunch of read alouds that I've done in case the subs like I don't want to I don't want to read that book even I w I don't know I we can do all the other stuff but I don't do want to do the read. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll include that too. So like all the things, but like the more I preset and plan ahead, the less I have to freak out in the moment like oh, I got to do you know sub stuff again. It doesn't become a freak out for me. So now there are six books that I have this re these resources for. I have <laughs> six more planning cuz like the the more of these that I can get done and prep the less I stress when sub times come around. And the more kids get used to the process, like cool, it's like it makes it so much easier. So um, I try and I try and make those like resources for the subs look as much as I can, like what they would see if they went to a second grade homeroom or a fourth grade homeroom um, and they pulled out the McGraw Hill whatever lesson because I want them to feel comfortable and familiar with that when they go into a subbing situation. Okay, so the, those are real helpful for subs. What else do I do for subs? Recently, I've been using technology because um, I know I'm so, so super blessed that at my school, all my students have um, iPads. I know not everyone has that option, but a lot of people do or have Chromebooks or whatever you might have at your school. So um, I've been um, sharing resources for kids uh, or, or sharing sub plans with kids that are um, technology based and a couple things that have worked really well um, the first is uh, Chrome Music Lab so I'll, I'll share with you sort of like I know some people like yes I've used it um, but let me share like how I prep them for a sub to do it because like yes I can do this with kids easily and it's fun and they don't you know no big issues but like how do I prep a sub to do that um, so the first thing I did was I took so if you're not familiar with Chrome Music Lab um, it's Google Chrome has made like a, a bunch of like experimental uh, things that, that kids or adults can try out. And, and this one is music based. So it's called Chrome. Well, I call it Chrome Music Lab. I don't know if this is official name, but uh, Chrome Music Lab. And what I did first was I just went to the website, which you can Google Chrome Music Lab, and I just made a QR for it. So the QR then means that when my students pull out their iPad, bam, it recognizes it and they can go to that website. So let me show you sort of what I show kids. Like this is literally what they would see in that sub lesson. So let me switch over our views here. Okay. So here's the view of my iPad. Um, and I usually do, ooh, sorry, Instagram, let me fix this really quick. I usually do either like a screen recording or um, sometimes I will even take my phone and literally record, like <laughs> train it on the iPad screen and literally um, take a recording of, of the screen itself instead of like a digital screen recording. But you can do whatever you want. Um, so usually what I say to kids is like, okay, I'm going to open up the camera app and here I am with my QR code. All right, so my camera app should find that QR code and it'll take me there. It should pop up the, okay, of course, when <laughs> I'm trying to show you, it doesn't work. Let's try this again. So when I open my camera, it should find the QR. Oh my word, the one time I want it to do it, it's not gonna do it. Hello. Oh my gosh, this is a David Ralph fail. I can't believe it. It did it when I practiced this like 20 minutes ago. I can't believe this. Anyway, so the QR works so well, so perfectly every single time. I love it, how wonderful. Okay, I wonder if we can do the QR just going through Chrome. Sometimes Chrome will just let you, well, here it is, I pull, it's already pulled up, but I wonder if I can pull it up here and do like a QR. Oh yeah, here, okay, so they're on, there we go. Okay, well, that all should work, let's see. Hello, okay, so I, that time I went in through Chrome, fine. So uh, the, the website is musiclab.chromeexperiments.com. They could just go there, or you can use the QR that sometimes apparently works. <laughs> it didn't work right now. Anyway, so what I do for students is on this view, I'll take a recording of this and I'll say, there's so many different cool apps that we can use. Let me show you just a few of the ones that I want you to try and focus on today. If you can get through these two, then you can go and do any of the ones that you want just for fun. But the two I'm gonna show you, the first one I wanna show you is this one right here. So if we click on the little monkey in the timpani, it takes us to this thing that says rhythm. And what you're gonna do is you, you get to sort of choose what happens down here. So I'm gonna press the play button. Cool. 
Cool. Okay, so this is not making any sound. Don't know why that is. Apparently it's in silent mode. Don't know what that means. Why is that? Oh, because it thinks it's on system capture. I don't know. Okay, well, cool. So my iPad is just like really, really helping me out right now. Anyway, <laughs> so um, so what what's happening is like what would what you would hear if Chrome were working correctly would be um, that like if you change these, it changes what the little monkey plays. And so as it goes through, um, it plays those sounds. So each little thing like the bottom line is the bottom line is one timpani the yellow line is another timpani and then the top is obviously the little guy playing the triangle woohoo okay so there there's this one i show them sort of how that works and what that looks like then they can go on to the next thing here's the same exact sort of thing only this is different um with it's the same process up here and the same process down here but the difference is on this one it's in three and you can see because where that line is gives you the strong beat. So strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. Okay, this one, the second example is in four. One, two, three, four. The third example is in five, sort of. Um, and then it, it keeps getting more and more progressively interesting and then in six. So the, the kids can go through and make their own sounds. And then when they press play, the little monkey will play the sound, which is cool. Apparently my iPad doesn't want to play it correctly right now. Who knows why? Who knows why? Apparently my settings are messed up. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> so great. I love when I show you examples and they don't work. It's great. Okay, so anyway, um, I take a video of this actually working and I, I record that for students and then I'll go back. And usually the two when I'm doing Chrome Music Lab, the two things that I leave for students are um, I have them look at the little monkey option up here and then I usually scroll them down. And it, it sort of depends on what we want to do that day. We'd either do this one, which is the song maker. Um, okay, yeah. Well, this is a fun one to be able to do. Again, if the sound were working, ooh. You can um, choose any of these, and then when you press play, it'll go through um, from left to right, and it'll play the pitches that match. So you can you know, assume, because apparently the sound doesn't want to work. Awesome. But you can assume that the sound would go through there and would play... Um, high and low depending on what it is down here you can change the timbre so you can change from marimba to piano strings wood the electronic part this part down here is all of the um there's like accompaniment sort of stuff that happens down here um so you can uh change all of those things too and then sort of add an, an extra part in there other settings you can change i don't tell kids to mess with this because this is just something that's a little bit uh, more advanced than what my kids can really handle but I, the things that I usually show them are, one, the play button, how to do that. The woodwind, which changes all the sounds up here. The kit, which, or sorry, yeah, well, it says kit. The, this is the accompaniment part, which changes all the sounds down in the bottom. And then restart. I show them that because I want them to know, like, if you want to clear it all out, you can. Um, once you've made something you really like, you can click save if you want. And when you click save, it'll save it at a link. It doesn't, you, you can download it, but my kids, I don't encourage them to download to their iPad because it just, it it fills up a lot of their space. So I don't really do that. Oh, the other thing they can change is the tempo, which is fun because like how, how fast it's, the machine will play it for you. So all things that like they can, they can do pretty well and have fun with, but what I usually say to kids is, you know, you could go in and do this and draw like a smiley face. You could go in and write, you know, Mr. Wow. Okay, well, that's not that worked so well in cursive. But you can go through and write names, you can do pictures, but does that sound good? Maybe you think so, maybe not, maybe not, but it's worth going in and trying different things. Is it does it make fun sounds if you make patterns? Does it make fun sounds if you do lines, if you do uh, if you do steps or if you do skips? Like what makes the what makes sound do you like? Why do you like that? And so as I'm doing a screen recording for kids, I'll ask those questions and ask them to think about that so that you know when they're going through on their own, they're not just like sitting and fiddling it, but they're actually getting something um, out of it, sort of creative out of it. So let's go back. There's one of that I sometimes will leave for them. So the song maker's a great one. The little monkey's a great one. There's another one down here. Um, the piano roll, this is another fun one that you can do. I mean, there are a lot of fun ones. Why does it say my iOS device is in silent mode? I don't even know what that means. Why is it in silent mode? What's so silent about it? Stop mirroring. Maybe that's what it was? I don't know. 
Oh, yeah, okay, I don't know why I was doing that. Anyway, so, um, this one will play for you. Okay, apparently I'm frozen here. Oh, cool. Okay, awesome. So anyway, <laughs> let's see if my iPad turns back on. Um, the, the, the piano roll is pretty cool too because then kids can go through um, and they can change a couple different things. They can change the speed. They can change the sounds. Yeah, it's not cool. Anyway, awesome. Love that. Don't know why it's not working. Well, let me change it back. Oh, don't know what that means. Okay, stop playing. So um, it can go through and do a lot of cool different things. But um, I like, like I said, I like to go with Chrome Music Lab and give um, kids some of the examples of like what they might see. So what I usually do with that tutorial video, let me turn this back around. What I usually do with that tutorial video is um, I take the video and then I do two things. I put a copy of that video on my sub flash drive so that when they plug into my whatever computer they have, um, they get the direct video there if they want it. I also sometimes will upload that tutorial video to YouTube so that they um, can click a link and go and watch it if they want. Um, so I try and give them options, but like once I've done one like Chrome Music Lab tutorial video, then it's there and I can use it for any grade, multiple grades. I can share out with other people if they want to like, here's how you do, you know. But like, um, it's it's nice to have that pre-made, pre-recorded and, and ready to show to kids. Another, uh, well, let me let me look at uh, Chrome Music Lab one more time here. Because the other thing is that like, you could, you could take them through line, you know, line by line to every single, um, app in there if you wanted but um but I, I, it's nice to be able to just um i don't know what my ipad is doing doing weird things um it's nice to be able to uh to focus on just one or two things because i like kids to be able to like make choices about the the options there in chrome music lab but if they get if they just are hopping between one thing to the other they're not really getting as much accomplished as as maybe they could. Let me see if the sound works now. Let's find out. Nope. Cool. Don't know why. Oh well. Um, so leaving that that sort of tutorial video for um, subs is usually really helpful. It gives them some ideas. Okay. Let's see. Let me see if I can show y'all GarageBand. Who knows? I don't know why my iPad is being so odd. It's being sort of weird. It's saying there's like like sound off? I don't know. Uh, what do I use to record the demo for kids? You can do a screen recording of your iPad, or I've also, I think I mentioned this a minute ago, you can, I, I just take my phone and take a video of my iPad. Sometimes I think that's better than doing a screen recording of the iPad itself, because then they can see me tapping around or like using the QR code or whatever, like actually seeing what that looks like and not just like a, you know, a version of it. They actually see that sort of sound, so... Okay, it says it's on silent mode. What is silent mode? I've never, <laughs> I've never had to do this before. Cool. Anyway, um, so another thing I'll share with kids, and I think I'll be able to show this one to y'all. Maybe who knows? Um, is I show them GarageBand, and a, and GarageBand is another thing that I I've always been nervous about sharing with, like a a sub because kids could just do a ton of things with it and. Does the sub know what's more productive or not? Like, mm, who, I don't know. But what I've sort of felt recently is like the kids are exploring and it's fun and they can try all sorts of different things. So it's worth them getting a chance to try it. Usually I'll try and do this in class once and then if they if we've done it before, then I'll put it in a, in a sub thing. Ooh, Tammy, if it has a silent mode switch, I'm going to be real impressed. I don't know. I don't think so. No, I don't think it has. It's one of those iPads. It's like a different. I don't think it has one of those. But Tammy, I'll be so impressed if it is, and I just have been missing it. That'd be so helpful. No. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Th thank you for trying, Tammy. Okay. Um. So let me show you. Let me flip it around and show you. Uh, GarageBand. That's sort of how I would use GarageBand. Okay. Well, there we go. And there we go. Okay. Cool. Let's see. Oh, I wonder if it'll do that. No? Okay, awesome. All right, so the GarageBand app, I'll usually open it up. And again, I'll just take a recording of the screen so they can sort of see it. I like showing them different places and how to navigate around here because 
GarageBand can be real confusing. If they open up to this screen, I would say like go up here and look for the plus sign. If you have stuff down here, those are songs you've already started, which you could go to, but like I, I want you to maybe start a new one. So if you go up here to the plus sign, um, it, it, it's going to take you to two places. So you could go over here to live loops or you could go here to tracks. And what I we're going to get to tracks in a minute, but first let's start with live loops. So if you're on live loops, the sound library, ignore that for just a second and just choose one of these things in here. Let me choose, uh, I don't know, let's choose rock. I don't know if the sound's going to work. Apparently my iPad's in silent mode. Who knows what that even means, but okay. So, <laughs> um, oh, cool. Well, there we go. All right. So the cool thing is it has all these preset sounds for you. Um, and when you play one, yeah, see, it's in silent mode. Why is it in silent mode? I don't even know what that means. Can anyone help me with the settings? Why is it on that? What's that mean? Nope. Okay, cool. I don't know why it's so silent. No? No, it's still silent. Yeah, don't know. Oh, don't want that. Can I turn that off? Maybe that'll turn off. Who knows? Anyway, if you have a great plan, if you know more about iPads than me, please share because it was working before I did the video, but now not. Okay. Anyway, so if, if you could hear it, um, it'd be playing <laughs> through this drum loop. Um, and then if you like click down here at the bottom on this little arrow down at the bottom, it plays all these loops in a row. And so it's like preset loops that kids can go through and make fun sounds with different things. Um, if you, if you just leave it, it will spin on that loop forever. But if you go down and click like, Ooh, sorry. If you go down and click like another set, it'll start a different stack. Um, or sometimes it'll wait until it's finished through the loop and then it'll switch to that new stack, right? So it's this is super fun for kids because that has all these different sounds, things that they can try out, things they can hear. Um, and then, you know, you can go through, there's usually an ending loop. Um, you can change things. So like if you're like, I don't want that one stack, maybe I want this one and this one and this one and this. It, you know, for the different instruments, you can loop together the things that you think sound great and sound um, interesting. So it's fun to be able to, to mix and match and try different things. Um, if you want to go back, you can hit the little, the little carousel button up here. It'll take you back and you can do other loops. So maybe you want to do a dubstep loop. Maybe you want to do a Chinese traditional sound loop. Maybe you want to do flex and flow or whatever, whatever floats your boat. That's fun. Um, my kids really like Solaris. That's a really fun one. And if you're like, oh, these loops are cool, you can also go to the sound library. What what Apple does is they have all these preset free things that you can try, but um, they don't load them all into your iPad because it may overload your iPad. So they put a bunch of things in the sound library. And so my kids, I say like, you're not gonna accidentally buy something that you shouldn't. These are all free for your iPad, but they're just not loaded on. So if you go to live loop, I, I don't even know if I would tell a sub that, but for, for like in a day when I'm teaching it in class, I might go through. But if you go through that, then you can go to the sound packs and download other things. And when you're done, you just hit done. So you, like Solaris might be one that we had to download, but, but there are a lot that are preloaded onto your iPad. These are all the live loops. Kids love these. They would play with these all day if they could, but definitely you're gonna want headphones. <laughs> Uh, Laura, thank you so much for trying to Google and help me. Um, but it says it's not in silent. I don't know. Let's see. It says pull down and not switch out of silent mode. I don't feel like I'm in silent mode. It says I'm screen mirroring. I don't know that I am. I don't know. It's being weird. Why is it doing this? Where's silent mode? That's silent mode. See, now it's off, but it's still, I bet we're not going to hear the sounds. Thank you so much, Laura, for trying to help. Yeah. Laura on Facebook. I am so thankful. Yeah, see, it's still not playing. Don't know. See, look, it says it's playing. It's not. What do you think you're connected to? Anyway, okay, well, we'll see. See, thinks it's connected. It's not connected. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so back in GarageBand, um, I always tell kids, if you get lost, go back to this little, these three little squares up here on the top left. Um, I, I call that the carousel. That's where you want to go. Don't hit the new page. Don't hit the other stuff. You get lost or you get bored or you get tired. Go hit the hit the carousel and it'll take you back. So these are the live loops, but then also there are the tracks. So the tracks, this is why I think about the carousel because this is more of like a traditional carousel for kids. When I'm trying to show them what they can do, um, there are all these different things. Drummer, external, there's the sound library, keyboard, drums, 
they're, they're all cool things. What we end up doing is like you could go through and try a bunch of these different things and kids will. But what is most beneficial that like really um, syncs up with comments um, it or sorry, it syncs up with the, the um, content that they maybe already have done would be beat sequencer. So I, I love this one because um, as you go, it's like if you well, here let me hit the power button to shut this off it'll go through and play whatever you draw um, or whatever you create in here so you can create different sounds try different things and um it'll play whatever you want you can change out the instruments you can change out different things there are different versions of this different packs and things you can try but um when you go in here to the beat sequencer it'll play this and then each of these if you think like this is one beat this is one beat this is one beat this is one beat and it's really broken into 16th notes so uh, right now I have like ta 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 and then if I came down here it'd be like takademi takademi and it just loops it and it plays all that for you so it's it's super cool what you could do in creating here the different sounds and options you can hear down below if you hit this little dice button it'll just randomize and it'll play different things for you if you hit this little button the little I think I call it a waffle um, if you hit the waffle, it gives you some presets that it thinks are cool. So classic house, it'll play that for you. Or um, someone say, oh, deep crate. I thought it said dog crate. Yeah, okay, deep crate, <laughs> deep crate. It has these preset sounds that it thinks are really cool. That's great, um, but you can also just reset and start and do your own version, which is if you hit the waffle and go all the way over to new pattern, we'll get you that cleared out version. And then one more thing, um, if you come down here to this thing that says Modern 808, you can change the sets of instruments that are that are in here. So right now, these are the Modern 808 instruments. Maybe I want a different set of instruments. Let me go to like Retro Box. Okay, well then these things all along the side have changed. That means the sounds it's going to put out have also changed. Maybe I want a different set. Let me go Acoustic. Liverpool. Ooh, okay. So it, it gives you different things you can play with. For kids, I would go through and I, when I'm doing this with the kids, I show them, well, I'll show you in just a second what exactly I show them. One thing I always tell them to avoid it, avoid this. Avoid the back button, the play button, and the record. Kids inevitably will record themselves because they think it's on or they think it's recording, but they don't know exactly how recording works. So it'll record sounds in here and then it'll it'll layer it in. GarageBand thinks that like you're creating this ma amazing new song that you're going to put out on YouTube or Spotify or whatever, and it's it's keeping all these tracks for you. So if you come and play here in the beat sequencer for a while and you hit record, it will record it and save it. If you then go back and then do something in a different set and hit record, it will hit record and it will layer it in for you as if you're creating this master track. If you go to live loops and hit record, it'll save all that and it'll make this like master track, but it's it's creating this, you know, super huge thing if you hit this little layer cake button. It shows you all the layers it's recorded. I haven't recorded any right now. But if a kid accidentally bumps the record button, it'll start recording stuff, and then they'll go to do something else in the app, and they'll be like, what is this background sound that's playing? Well, it's the thing that you recorded unknowingly, you know, for the last 10 minutes, you've been recording yourself in the beat sequencer, and the iPad saved all of that. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> so I just tell kids, Avoid the record button. If you're going to be doing this, just hit the power button here at the bottom. That will start the loops up for you. Um, but ignore the record up at the top. So when I'm showing kids how to do this, I have two videos that I share with the sub. One, I will go through and I'll talk about the, the carousel. And then I'll say, let's talk about live loops. Show them some of the benefits and how to do that. Maybe a four minute video of like how the live loops work and what you might do with live loops. And then end of video. Then I'll do a separate video where I talk again about GarageBand, blah, 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 and I talk them through the beat sequencer, like what you can do, how you can do it, the sounds you can make, um, and I show them that so that they have um, a, an idea of sort of what you can do with the beat sequencer. But both of those, I load them to YouTube. I put those videos of myself explaining on a flash drive so they can see and get, um, so they can see and sort of get some of that uh, content with like me showing them how it works and then when the sub is there they can just show that video of like my tutorial of how to do it and then they can monitor kids and the, the note i leave for the sub is do not let them navigate away from GarageBand to a web browser or something else just make sure that they're all in the app and if they are then anything they do in GarageBand 
um, is usually they stay on task and are having a great time. They want to share with friends, fine. But um, as long, if they navigate to some other app or somewhere else, no. But I know what content they can do in GarageBand. That's all pretty safe. But um, anywhere else they go, I just don't want the sub to have to deal with that. So that's the only caveat. Usually I say to the sub, like, play the tutorial video and let them explore. Um, if you want to share at the end, cool. Um, if you can have them navigate the share function. Most of my kids are like, I can airplay. Cool. Well, fine. But um, if, if the sub wants to deal with that, that's fine. But as long as the kids stay in GarageBand and I also say like headphones on because it can get real loud if all the garage bands are going at a different time and it's sort of chaotic. So GarageBand is free on your iPad. You've already got it. Chrome Music Lab is free on the web. Chrome Music Lab you can use even if you're on a Chromebook and it, and it works pretty well. Um, GarageBand works really well on the iPad. If you have like a desktop version of GarageBand on your computer, it is not the same functionality. I mean, it does a lot of the same things, but it's not like geared for younger kids. And for years, I would have tech people be like, well, why don't you use your iPads for GarageBand? I'm like, okay, but what what are you gonna, what are you doing on GarageBand? Because for a long time, the iPad app, its main function was like to help you record sounds and come up with sounds like record to put out a thing. And that, the technical aspect of that is beyond so many of my students. So this, using the GarageBand for this to like explore and try, great. Uh, to talk about loops, to talk about rhythms, all of that, great. But like, I'm not using GarageBand the way GarageBand thinks I should be using GarageBand, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not using it to create some song that's going to be my SoundCloud breakthrough release or whatever. You know, like, I'm, I'm using GarageBand for sort of a different function. So for years, tech people were like, well, use GarageBand. I'm like, well, how? And then, then they couldn't really tell me. So like, this is a way that I think that is sort of curricular and worth worth taking the time to do. Okay, and then one more thing, I'm almost out of time, but one more thing that I love to, sh to leave for students is QR reader games. Of course, my QR reader didn't work today when I was trying to show you, so cool, awesome, love it. No, but um, I'm gonna try and see if it works for me now. Um, so I leave QR code games for subs because um, it means that like if the kids have their iPads, all they have to do is scan the game and then go do it. And they get a chance to do whatever content it is that's in the game. So I leave all sorts of games. Sometimes I'll leave like themed games. So like when I left the last time for a sub, I left like St. Patrick's Day themed versions of the rhythm thing or the note thing or the tr treble club thing or whatever it is that we're working on. Um, so themed things are cool. Um, I like to leave uh, QR games where it's like listen and then tell me what rhythm you heard or sorting games like what instrument family does this belong to all sorts of things that like kids can work through that's like maybe previously learned content that they can now explore and they think it's a game or they think it's fun because they get to use their iPad but like really it's review but <laughs> they like it because they think ooh it's iPad time cool so let me show you a couple um, of the, the things that I might leave and like again how I would do it so um, let's see, what's a great example? Um, let me show you this one because I love Star Wars. Okay, so um, again, I'll have a QR, I'll print it out for the sub, and then I love putting some of these in these um, laminated, uh, well, no, no, the dry erase pouches because it, it, I can just print it out on normal paper and this keep makes it pretty durable, even if the sub or the kids are playing around with it or being rough with it. So um, what I'll usually do is, again, I try and show um, the kids a little tutorial of like how it might work. So let's see if my iPad QR reader works now. My iPad is just having a bad day. So, oh well, let's see if it works. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll usually do a screen recording again. I'll take a video of myself um, doing this. Let's see if my QR reader works. Hey, it worked. Okay. So basically I show kids like you take the camera, you point it at the QR and usually up here on the top of the screen or somewhere on the screen, it'll say like, Hey, you want to open this QR? Sure. And so we open it up. So this specific game, what the kids are, um, what the kids are trying to do is they're trying to um, see the word and then come up with the rhythm that matches that word. So, um, ooh, choose the right rhythm to move through each challenge. Help us, please. You're our only hopes. So they start and um, they click through. So Han Solo, 
Which of those planets has the rhythm that would match? Is it ta rest? Is it ta ta di? Is it ta ta? So the sound han so lo. That's three sounds. So I think that it's this one ta ta di. But just for fun, I'm going to press the red planet and see if it's ta ta just for fun. Oh no, don't underestimate the power of the dark side. You chose the wrong rhythm. You're our only hope. Try again. So the, if the kid messes up, it's not like end of the world, you're done. But it's more like, try again. So then we'll go with the one that's correct and see what happens. Hooray, the force must be with you. You chose the right rhythm. Next challenge. So then they go through tie fighter. So again, it's ta ta di. Okay, cool. Um... Hooray! Your force must be with you. Okay, so then BB-8. So again, if they choose the wrong one, they'll get, you know, Darth Vader or whatever and a Stormtrooper. Oh, no. So there are like 30 different words that they can go through and try. This is a really fun one because, again, it's so much of what we're doing in class of like making the connection between the word, the syllable, and the sound, and then the rhythm. So this is a fun one to try out. Let me see if I can show you another game. Ooh. Ooh, yes, this is another favorite because it's dragons. Okay, so let me show you this one. So again, if I'm doing this for um, a sub, I might take a video of myself and say, okay, so first you have to just scan the QR, open the QR, and let's see what the game has us do. Okay, so it's loading. Let's see what it will say for us. So this one says, ooh. Okay, so this is like the demo version, so is why it, it opens this up first. Let's see. Let's open up the instrument one. Collect the gems. We need your help to collect all the lost gems. Choose a game below to begin your adventure. Well, let's look at the strings. Volcano Adventure. Match the instrument name to its picture to find the gems hidden near the volcano. Oh, well. Okay. Name this instrument. Oh, that's obviously a mountain dulcimer. Perfect. Okay, let me press that. Oh, no. Wrong. Okay, that's an electric guitar. Oh, no. Okay, well, it's a violin. So when the kids hit violin, then out comes a little gem that's been hidden, and they, they have to collect all the gems um, to, to finish the challenge. Okay, so what is this? That's a ukulele. I know because I love ukulele, so I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Okay, so again, it's just like games challenges for kids to try out this is a fun one because there are some things in here they wouldn't know i don't think my kids know what an auto harp is i don't use my auto harp near enough for them to be able to at sight be able to tell me what that is but you know they're like sitar what's that oh it's not that okay so maybe you know this is it it helps reinforce the things they already know it helps them learn some things that they don't already know so that's pretty cool too let me go back because also in this hello I also have a version of this with like music symbols and um, common things here. So let's look at the dynamics one. Okay, forte, loud. Okay, what symbol is that? So, you know, so they go through and again, they have to try and find the correct thing. And then every time they do, they earn a gem. This is a great one too, because again, it's like reinforce, learn, reinforcing learned concepts. They think it's fun because the gem flies out at them. They love that. But this version has dynam dynamics, common musical symbols, um, note value, and temp tempi. And the other one has instrument families based on, you know, strings, percussion, woodwinds, brass. Okay, one more. This is another rhythm one. And again, these are just so easy because kids love the QR. They're able to go and play. And they can usually figure out how the game works. Um even if the sub is having a hard time or if my demo video for them didn't really explain it, they can usually sort of figure out how the game works and get through. But it, no matter what they're doing, it's good content for them to get that experience. So this one is matching up um, foods with rhythms. Again, like we did a Star Wars, only this is a little bit more advanced. So let's look at the full demo here for the veggies. So what they have to do, this includes 16th notes. Um, so they have to figure out which rhythm goes with each food. So let's try it out. So carrot corn, mushroom corn. Is that ta di ta di ta di ta? Is it ta di ta ta di ta? Or is it ta di ta ta ka di di ta? Let's just see if it's ta di ta ta ka di di ta. Let's see if that's what it is. Oop, nope. Okay, let me try it again. Carrot corn, mushroom corn. I'm pretty sure it's this one. 
Hooray, you chose the right rhythm. Great job. And then again, if my iPads were playing, if my iPad were playing sound today, which don't know why not, it's just being so sad at me, um, it would play a little chirp sort of a sound. Avocado, onion, avocado, corn. So this one is one that's uh, based for my older grades because number one, it's, it's four different foods, right? It's not just one food at a time. It's four different foods and it includes 16th notes. So this one is a little bit more advanced for kids. This also includes... Uh, let me see if I can find an example of it. Radish, corn, broccoli, corn. So yeah, this one includes um, 16th and 8th note pairs. So that's, again, pretty advanced for kids. But they're able to do it because they know the foods, right? Like, well, they maybe don't know this is a radish. That's sort of a stylized picture. But they can usually figure out... Um, they can figure out which food goes with which. And, and then if this is a trickier concept, this takadi or tea uh, or whatever you say, whatever version, they can sort of realize like broccoli, oh, okay. And so they're making that connection between what these things are. Even if they don't have the firmest grasp on takadi or tadimi, um, they can usually figure it out using the game. We'll do one more just for fun. Avocado, corn, garlic, garlic. Well, I don't think my kids would like that so much because <laughs> they're not big garlic fans. But, okay, avocado, corn, garlic, garlic. So kids along the way, they can also see there's a little progress bar up here to show them sort of like how far they are. Okay, let me turn this back around because my iPad is just being so helpful. So um, those are just a few of the QR games that I leave for kids. And like I said, I have a lot of these printed out that are just, again, in a folder in my um, in my sub tub or in my sub sort of um, filing cabinet so the sub can just pull it out. As long as I email the teacher ahead of time, the homeroom teacher, and say, like, please send your iPads. <laughs> if I forget, that's a problem. But um, as long as the kids have their iPads, they can, again, with a little prompting, with a demo video for me, they can navigate through GarageBand. They can navigate through Chrome Music Lab. Um, they can do any of the QR games. I don't even know if I would need to give them a demo for that because it's pretty self-explanatory, like scan and go. And there's an explanation on the game itself. But it is helpful to, like... Not for the prop, not for them like clicking through. They they can click through on an iPad. That's not a problem. But to give them the quick demo of like, okay, think about the word, think about the sounds in the word. You know, if we're if it's one of those games where it's like match the rhythm to the word. Okay, avocado. How many sounds does that have? That's what I would put in the demo video. I wouldn't be like click here to move ahead. They can figure that out. But helping them process through like, oh, that instrument has, um, it it's like a metallic gold. Okay, well then that's probably not strings or percussion, maybe. I don't know, you know, like helping them reason through, like why would it be in the brass or woodman's family? Helping them think through the process of what it is they're actually doing and less the thing of like, click this button to go to the next, they can figure that out. They're very smart. But talking through some of those processes is really helpful. Okay, so one last thing um, is that with all my sub files, I have a dedicated flash drive that I wrote in big marker um, sub flash drive on it, right? And I, I put it in a Ziploc baggie that says sub flash drive on it. And I put that out where the sub can find it. And on that sub flash drive, I'll put a digital copy of my notes for the day. So if there, uh, the reason I do that is that like, if there's a YouTube link or something, I don't want them to have to sit there at the computer, right? YouTube.com slash XRLTM underscore 5320, you know, like whatever. I don't want to have to worry about that. They could, but if I give them a digital copy of the notes, they can just click that or copy paste it and then just go to that. So that makes their life a little bit easier, I think. Um, so the digital copy is always on the flash drive. Um, and then also I have, you know, if I have one of these book companion things that I made, right? I'll have a read aloud sometimes, or I'll have digital copies of things in case they need to make more copies. Um, I'll put those tutorial videos on there. Anything I think the sub might need, I try and leave on that sub flash drive. Um, and it's just an old flash drive that I got, inherited, bought, I don't remember. But um, I, it's so valuable to have that to leave with a sub because you never know who's going to come sub for you or what technology they're going to be used to. So having that there to just plug in and go is really, really helpful. Okay, I hope this gives you some ideas of things you can throw in your sub tub or use with subs in the future. Like I said, literally every time I do sub plans, it always feels like this is the first time I've ever done sub plans. Why is this so hard? So I, I hope that sharing some of this like makes it like, hey, cool, we can use these QR games or we can use these you know book companion kits or whatever to just make that process a little easier because 
it's stressful. It always is. Even for people who've done it a long time, it's stressful. So um, I hope this gives you some ideas along the way. As always, if you have questions, feel free to email me. If there's anything I mentioned, it's probably on the links page, which you can find by clicking the link at the bottom of the caption for this video or podcast, wherever you're listening. Um, or you can go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org, and click, click the video tab to find those things. But um, all, all those links for things I've shared today are there. Um, or if they're not, send me an email. Okay, everyone, I hope you have a great night and a great time teaching your kids this week, and I'll see you next week for another video. Good night, everyone.